I am looking at my Ryobi 300 watt power source I just went over the other day in our Tool Fest video. And what I want to do is challenge it to see if it can run this fan. And then we're going to measure the amperage. The small orange device here, we put in line with our cord so I can put my multimeter on it and we can see how many amps and volts this device is producing, the power source, to see if it can run the big bad fan. We have a four amp hour, 40 volt Ryobi battery. It's fully charged. We're going to insert it into the power source. I'm gonna turn the power source on. Green light comes on, so the power source is on. We're gonna check the voltage. I'm using the Meturk MK06 multimeter, got it on Amazon. It sets for DC volts, and now I'm gonna switch it to AC volts. There's a volt check right here. And we are producing 124 volts. I'm now gonna switch it to the 40 amp setting. I'm gonna put it on. There's two different holes here on this device. There's one that just gives you the actual amperage reading and one that multiplies it by 10 for small amperages, makes it easier to read. We just turn it on low speed. We are running at 0.43 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up to medium speed. We're at 0.49 amps. High speed up to 0.58 amps. Now I have my shop blower, which should be a little bit more powerful. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to low speed, which is number one. We are at 0.82 now, so a higher amperage. We'll go ahead and turn it up to level two. Just about 0.9 and level three, just over one amp. So still handles the fan. Man, this thing's tough. I should say, don't try this at home, everybody. This is just my test in a controlled environment. Put that up there. All right, we're gonna try both fans now. So I have the box fan hooked up to the plug on the workshop fan, and I'm gonna turn on the box fan, and then we'll turn on the workshop fan. We'll turn them both on low. Shop fan on low. We are at 1.25, 1.26. All right, I'm gonna turn the box fan on medium. 1.32, now the work fan on medium. Just shy of 1.5. All right, let's turn them to high. First the box fan. Up to just over 1.5. And the shop fan. 1.65, still going. For our next challenge, I've added a studio light to the back. So I'm going to add that type of load as well. We have the studio light. I'm gonna plug right into the shop fan right now. We should turn it on. It's actually Bluetooth controlled. All right, there's our studio light. Hopefully that's not too bright, which is at 0.27. And I'm gonna jack these suckers up the high box fan first. 0.27 all the way up to 0.78. Don't want to forget that this thing does have a light on it. Hopefully that helps. So 0.76. Just shy of two amps. What I've done now is I actually have both my studio lights and this extra light illuminated. We are at 2.32 amps. So I'm thinking we're gonna overload this thing here in a second. So 2.33 amps, I think one fan might do it. Let me show you what I have here. This studio light is illuminated with a device as well as this studio light. This very safe looking plug configuration, we're in a controlled environment. It's okay, it's all right, see? So let's, uh, let's turn this bad boy on. Maybe I'll just turn on the workshop fan. I think it should be noted that I do hear the fan running now in the inverter. I guess there's enough going on with it that needs to cool down. So I think we're close to reaching its peak. I think it's gonna be about two and a half amps. All right, let's turn this thing on. One. So we're over, oh, 
over three amps and it shuts off. Let's see what happens. Over three amps and it shuts off. So we overloaded enough. It took one, two, three studio lights. It took one fan. And as you can see, it's blinking red down here because of the overload. Just gives you a little bit of perspective on the issue it's having. As you can see, it's not coming back on now. So even though I turned off the fan, it's staying offline. Let's see what happens if we hit the button. Will it, uh, will it come back on? There. And our lights came back on. We're running below two amps, so we had to reset it. So it has, it trips, which is good. It has a good fail safe then, and it won't uh, overheat and potentially have a fire hazard to it. It should also be noted that our battery had three bars at the end of testing, so it used a little bit of power. If you have any other things you'd like me to test with this particular inverter, let me know. I'll continue to find stuff here at the shop, test it out, maybe some of the old corded power tools. I think two and a half amps is pretty low for corded power tools, but I know some of the older, like smaller drills might fit into that category. But I'll keep looking around. I'll find something. We could have added the Ryobi fan as well, but uh, hope you enjoyed the test and get an idea of what this thing can do. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. And I will see you guys on the next one.